Under cover of darkness, just over a year ago, members of the firm, a major Essex drugs gang, are on their way to a meeting. Their Range Rover pushes down a lonely farm track. Seconds later, all three men were dead, blasted in the head from a pump-action shotgun at point-blank range. Good morning. Right, this morning, I'm in Pitsy Cemetery. Uh, now I'm here to film two of the Essex boys and uh, I've already filmed one of them. I've already filmed Tony Tucker. I did him when we're out uh, for video uh, for Le the Leah Betts uh, final resting place. Uh, I'm only going to do short bios on this because obviously there are three graves I've got to visit. So um, as I say I'm in Pitsy but I'll show you now the footage I took when I went to um, Upminster Crematorium and Cemetery. Good morning, I hope everyone's okay out there. Right, today I'm in Corbett's Tay Cemetery in Upminster and I am here to see the first of the Essex boys, Tony Tucker. I recently did a video about Leah Betts and uh, Tony Tucker, the rest of his resting place we're going to see today. He is one of the people who is allegedly responsible for providing the uh, ecstasy tablet that um, sadly took her life. So what we should do, have a quick look around. I uh, will uh, tell you a little bit about him. Then we're going to see his resting place. And then we've got to move cemeteries to go and find Craig Rolfe and Pat Tate. Tony Tucker was a head of a security firm that provided security for nightclubs across Essex. He was also the sec security guard for former middleweight boxing champion Nigel Benn. As a member of the gang, he ran drugs into Essex clubs during the 1980s and 1990s. He specialised in punishment beatings and frequently used torture as a means of getting people into line. The gangster was ultimately responsible for providing the ecstasy pill that led to the shocking death of 18-year-old Leah Betts in November 1995. Right, for anyone who's seen um, the film Rise of the Foot Soldier, which is one of my all-time favourite films, um, they will recognise this name of this fellow we're going to see today. Though it's not strictly accurate. But anyway, I found his uh, resting place. I'll turn you around. All right, this one is Tony Tucker. There were three of them. There you go, this one is the final resting place of Tony Tucker. 17th of November, 1957 to 6th of December, 1995. So many things I want to say. I miss you in so many ways. I long to have you hold me tight through empty days and lonely nights. In my dreams, I see your face so special you can't be replaced. I'll treasure all my memories of everything you were to me and one sweet day we'll meet again till then my life is filled with pain. You'll live forever in my mind. You truly were one of a kind. You know and love you. I was, I can't read the rest. You're in my heart always the best. But there it is, the final resting place of Tony Tucker. Right, that is it. Let's move on. We've got to go down to Pitsy now to find 
the final resting place of the other two. Well, and as I said, it was only going to be a short bio uh, on Tony Tucker. Um, what we'll do now is I'll quickly spin you around and have you have a little look around this cemetery while I give you a short um, bio on uh, Craig Rolfe. Craig Rolfe, a violent cocaine addict who was born in London's Holloway Prison. According to his neighbours, he was an avid motorist and always had different cars on his drive as if he were a car dealer. At the time of his death, Rolf was reportedly sharing a three-bedroom single-family home with his girlfriend of seven years, Donna Jaggers, and her six-year-old daughter. Due to his reputation as a drug addict, it is widely believed that Rolf was part of the notorious gang. After all, the Essex boys were mainly involved in drug deals during their reign of terror in the 1980s and 1990s. Right, Craig Rolf, he was um, Tony Tucker's uh, gopher. Uh, Tony Tucker liked having him around simply because in the business he was in, um, it was always handy having a fall guy, somebody could pass the blame on to. And Craig Rolf was a nothing really, he was just, uh, he was disposable. So it was always handy for Tony Tucker to have him around. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and find his grave. I know roughly where it is. So we'll have a, a quick mooch, see if we can find it. Right, I think it's over here. Let's quickly spin you around and we'll uh, see if we can see him. All right, where are you? There he is. All right. Let's have a look. This is a final resting place for Craig Rolfe. In loving memory of a dear son, brother and father, Craig Anthony Rolfe, who was taken from us 6th of December 1995, aged 26. His life, a beautiful memorial, his absence, a silent grief. It's still sad, even knowing what he did what he was involved in, who his friends were. It is still really sad. But there we go, there is the final resting place of the second of our Essex boys, Craig Anthony Rolfe. Right, well what we'll do now is we'll go and find the third, uh, Pat Tate, because Pat Tate is also buried in this cemetery. So what we'll do, same as usual, I shall spin you around, we'll have another little look around while I give you a very short bio on Pat Tate, and then we will go to his final resting place. Pat Tate ran the Essex Boys Gang, which was involved mainly in drug deals. He was a bodybuilder who weighed 18 stone and on the side was getting convicted of armed robbery and drug offences. Pat Tate, 37, was found shot dead in a Range Rover on an isolated farm track in Rettendon on the morning of December 7th, 1995, alongside Tony Tucker, 38, and Craig Rolfe, 26. The gang eventually became one of the most notorious in British history and sparked a number of films, including Essex Boys, starring Sean Bean. Right, I've just seen Pat Tate's grave, so what we'll do is we'll go to that now and then after we've done uh, Pat Tate's final resting place um, there is I have heard that one of their victims is also buried in this cemetery uh, so I'm going to go and look for that I've no idea where it is I've already checked out three quarters of the cemetery but the final quarter I've not quite done yet I was just waiting for it to get light enough to film this um, these two that I know where they are. So anyway, let's turn you around and let's go and have a look at the final resting place of Pat Tate. Right, this one isn't difficult to find. I found him straight away because I'll show you the back first, actually. If you look on the back of his headstone, he clearly says Pat. 
so I knew exactly where it, where it was. Well, here we go. This is a final resting place of Pat Terence Tate. Treasured memories of Pat Terence Tate, who departed this life on December 6th, 1995, aged 37. Loving father, loyal friend and brother, missing your smile and generous heart, your presence will never leave us. Now you walk with the angels, looking down from God's create a great kingdom. Until we meet again, God bless, we will never forget you. But there you go, and there's a picture of him there as well. But there you have it, there's the final resting place of Pat Tate. And if you want to know why I found it so easy to find Pat Tate, if you look there, right next to him, it's Craig Rolf. I'm getting both in the same picture. There we go. Pat Tate to the left, Craig Rolf to the right, with a space in between. But there you go, that is the final resting place of Pat Tate and Craig Rolf. And what I'll do now is I will go and try and find uh, a fella who I've been told is in this cemetery and he was a victim of the Essex Boys. So I'll go and have a look now and then I will come back to you if I find it. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't find the final resting place of uh, Kevin Whitaker, his name was. And he was a victim of the, uh, the Essex Boys allegedly uh, but what I'll do is I'll give you a bio on him anyway even though I couldn't find his final resting place I did read somewhere that he was buried here too um, but anyway we'll have a quick look around while I give you a read out the bio of Kevin Whitaker. Another theory for the Essex boys murder is that they were responsible for the death of Kevin Whitaker, who was a member of a rival drugs gang Kevin Whitaker was born in Chelmsford, Essex on 19th of October 1966. He was killed on the 17th of November 1994 and his remains were found the very next day. Pat Tate had gloated that Tony Tucker and Craig Rolfe had spiked Kevin's drink with ketamine. Once unconscious, they had injected a lethal, co lethal concoction of other drugs known as Special K into his groin, killing him. They then loaded his remains into a hired Vauxhall Corsa and rolled him into a roadside ditch in Basildon. They had taken cannabis to the value of £60,000 from him, which was the motive for the killing. In 1996, Craig Rolfe's mother admitted that he had been responsible for the killing of Kevin in an interview with the News of the World newspaper. Was this killing the downfall of the Essex boys? Was the death of Leah Betts the beginning of the end for the Essex boys? Michael Still and Jack Holmes were convicted of the Range Rover murders and both received life sentences. Jack Holmes has now been released from prison after serving 23 years. But at the time of making this video, Michael Still remains behind bars. He is now 81 years old. Well, that is it now for the Essex boys. Uh, there was another double murder um, done in exactly the same way in Epping in 1989, which was um, six years before the Essex boys. There was a young couple down a loving lover's lane in Epping Forest and they were gunned down in exactly the same way. Door was opened, they were both shot with a shotgun. and. Uh, some people say that that is the mark of a uh, gun for hire, a professional hitman. And because of the circumstances surrounding it, the fact that the gentleman involved, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the gentleman involved was also involved in um, gangland activity. And also, he ran security for pubs and clubs in Essex and London in exactly the same way as Tony Tucker did. Now, do I think the murder was in any way retribution for Kevin Whitaker? 
I would have to say, in my own personal opinion, that no, I don't, because if anyone was going to do it, if another drug, drugs gang was going to do this, they would have done it a lot sooner. They wouldn't have waited a whole year to have done it. Uh, do I think Leah Betts, um, out of all the scenarios I've mentioned, is the most likely, but obviously there's also a hell of a lot more scenarios. I think the most likely one of all is it's some kind of drugs deal where they themselves have been caught out in exactly the same way they used to catch out others, like Kevin Whitaker, for, Kevin Whitaker, for example. They executed him to get his money, uh, to get his drugs. And I reckon that probably um, they have done, or they have had done to them what they have done to others. Whether Michael Steele was anything to do with it, I honestly don't know. I wouldn't even like to say yes or no on that one. But that'll do for the Essex boys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. And I will see you again soon, wherever I'm going to be. So until then, bye-bye for now.